good day, criminology students and reviewees. So today, we will just continue our discussion. And our topic for today is all about the positivist trio and their contributions. It is called positivist trio because it composed of three Italians who founded the positivist school of criminology. The positivist school of criminology was founded at the end of 19th century by Cesar Lombroso and his two Italian disciples, Enrico Ferri and Rafael Garofalo. Let's begin first with Cesar Lombroso. So who is Cesar Lombroso? So Cesar Lombroso, his full name, Ezequiel Marco Lombroso, was born November 6, 1835 in Verona, Italy. He is an Italian criminologist and is often seen as the founder of positivist school of criminology. Cesar Lombroso also regarded as the father of modern criminology due to his application of modern scientific methods to trace criminal behavior. Lombroso also an Italian doctor who did research and wrote a variety of topics, like for example, the scientific ways to study corpses, the mental disease, and the brain pathology. But his most important work, and certainly the work that he's best known for today, is the book, The Criminal Man. He wrote this book and first published in 1876. Lombroso developed his theory of anthropological criminology, or sometimes referred to as the criminal anthropology. The term criminal anthropology, literally a combination of the study of the human species and the study of criminals. In this theory, he suggests that there are basic differences between offenders and non Lombroso thought that criminals were born with inferior physiological differences. He popularized the notion of born criminal. More specifically, according to Lombroso, born criminals have certain physical characteristics or abnormalities that make them different. And stated that criminality was inherited and that someone born criminal could be identified by physical defects which confirm a criminal as savage or atavistic. Lombroso called these abnormalities as atavistic characteristics. So I have these examples of physical or atavistic characteristics where asymmetry of the face, deviation in head size and shape, the eye defects, excessive dimensions of the jaw and the cheekbones, and also the ears of unusual size. So people who had these characteristics were atavistic, thus were criminal in nature, which becomes the causes of crime. The process ideas was based on his own research, and he used his atavistic theory to explain why people were born he and his students, especially Perry and Garufalo, studied thousands of people. He also did autopsies on deceased people to study their skulls and their brain. Like, for example, in his theory of criminal men, wherein Lombroso conducted an autopsy by the name Joseph Villela, a 70 year old Calabrian brigand whom he examined in prison in November 1872. The autopsy revealed an anomaly in cranial structure, a smooth concavity of the occipital area described as the median occipital facet. The discovery of facet convinced Lombroso that this anomaly is not present in normal individuals and the fruit that criminals are born. So let's go to next, the Lombroso's classification of criminals. 
So first, atavistic or born criminals. These are born criminals according to Lombroso. And the belief that being criminal behavior is inherited. Second, criminal by passion. These are those individuals who are easily influenced by great emotions like fit to anger. So third, insane criminal. They are those who commit crime due to abnormalities or psychological disorders. They should be exempted from criminal liability. Criminaloids also a person who commit crime due to less physical stamina or less self-control. Occasional criminal, they are those persons who commit crimes due to insignificant reasons that push them to do at a given occasion. And lastly, the pseudo-criminals are those persons who kill in self-defense. Take note, when we say self-defense, these are those who act in defense of their person or right. Self-defense is one of the justifying circumstances under Article 11 of the Revised Penal Code. So let's go to next, Enrico Ferri. Enrico Ferri is also one of the founder of Positive School of Criminology. He was born February 25, 1856, and one of the best known Lombrosius associates. He expressed interest in Lombrosius ideas of the basic biological position of criminal behavior, but he focused more on the importance and interrelatedness of social, economic, and political factors. Very also an Italian criminologist and a socialist and also a student of Lombroso. When we say socialist, there are those persons who advocates or practices socialism. That's why Ferry's interest in socialism led him to recognize the importance of social and economic determinants. He also published a book entitled Criminal Sociology, and one of his greatest contributions was his attack on the classical doctrine of free will in which free will argued that criminals are liable for their crimes because they must have made a rational to commit crimes. Perry rejected free will because he believed that social as well as biological, anthropological, and physical factors played a role and held the view that Criminals should not be held responsible for the factors causing their criminality were beyond their control. And these factors include first the physical factors such as the temperature, geographic location, the climate, the seasonal effects. And because of this, according to Ferry, it causes them to commit crimes outside of an individual's control. And also, second, anthropological factors, such as the psychological conditions of a person that causes them also to commit crime. And lastly, the social factors, such as economic. So for example, poverty. Next, the density of populations, the different customs, the different religion, the lack of sufficient education, political factors, and industrial conditions. That's why Ferry believed that criminals could not be held morally responsible because they did not choose to commit crimes, but was driven or driven to commit them by conditions of their lives. So let's go to the next, Rafael Garofalo. So Rafael Garofalo also is an Italian jurist and also student of Lombroso. He is an Italian magistrate, a senator, a law professor who was credited to have coined the term criminology in Italian word criminologia. He, re he rejected also 
the doctrine of free will and supported the position that the only way to understand crime was to study it by scientific method. He attempted to formulate a sociological definition of crime that would designate those acts which can be repressed by punishment. This constitu constituted natural crime. When Garofalo defined natural crime was the conduct which offends the basic moral sentiments of pity is the revulsion against the voluntary infliction of suffering on others, or in short, the respect for people, and the probity or the respect for property rights of others or the respect for property. According to Garofalo, the true criminal is he whose altruistic sensibilities are lacking and are in a deficient stage of development. Garofalo developed a type of criminals and each type are characterized by a deficiency in the basic altruistic sentiments of pity and probity. So first, the murderers. According to Garofalo, the murderer is a man whom altruism is wholly lacking. The sentiment of both pity and probity are absent. And such criminal kills as the occasion arises. And these persons are satisfied from vengeance or revenge. Second, the violent criminals. Violent criminals are characterized by lack of pity and they commit very serious crimes, sometimes under the influence of alcohol. Third, deficient criminals. They are indicated by a lack of probity and they commit crimes against property. And lastly, lascivious criminals. These are the group of sexual offenders who commit crimes against chastity. What are the crimes against chastity? It includes the concubinates, adultery, seduction, acts of lasciviousness, or abduction. So take note, in memorizing crimes against chastity, just do not forget the acronym ASA. So that's all for today. Thank you and God bless. <laughs>